Fossi is an amazing company. They are supremely focused on improving. I've had other manufacturers simply refuse to send me products because of a bad or even a perceived bad review, but not Fossi. They take criticism to heart like I do about my teeth, but unlike me, they actually work on making positive changes. So they sent me a pair of Fossi V3 monoblock amplifiers for my review, and I couldn't test them because there was noise in the supplied 10 amp power splitter. So they sent me two 5 amp bricks. This review was done solely with the 5 amp power supplies. Unlike many reviewers who poo poo cheap products, assuming they simply can't compare to products costing hundreds or even thousands of dollars more, I actually don't care about price. You may care about price, but you don't have your daddy backing up your audiophile life choice. It's not a hobby. When I originally reviewed the V3 stereo amplifier, my complaint was it was anemic and lacking in dynamics. I declared the IEMA A07 Max the king of cheap amps. This sent shockwaves through the wider audio community. I measured the Fosse's weak output and was attacked for not knowing what I was doing and told to stay in my corner. Since that time, other reviewers have measured the V3 and showed the same thing I already knew, a lack of dynamic punch. Don't get me wrong, the IEMA A07 lacked dynamic punch and also was load dependent, but it could play louder than the Fosse V3 due to what I can only speculate was added gain. Did Fosse improve the dynamics with the monoblock version? Before listening, let's take a look at it. The front has two switches, XLR or RCA, plus an on-off or auto switch. Simple, like an amplifier should be. On the rear, you have both an XLR and RCA input. The RCA includes a 25 dB or 31 dB gain switch. Yes, you can thank me for that. Speaker binding posts and a power input. I like amps, they're nice, they're simple. And as everyone and their grandmother already said about the Fosse, the holes on the sides are for ventilation. And Fosse makes a bold claim on their website. Zero crosstalk. This could be the first monoblock amplifier that ever made such a claim. In over 50 hours of listening and 10 hours of bench testing, I can say they are right. Zero crosstalk. <laughs> Unbelievable. I don't think anyone thought this was possible. It also has an auto trigger, a nice feature to allow it to stay ready 24 seven without it being actually on to save energy and also to save the unit from getting blistering hot. I would have preferred a real trigger, but this is certainly better than nothing at all. On the inside, the Fosse uses the TI TPA 3255 chip. As you can see, buying in bulk, the chip is about $5. But while the chip is the heart of this amp, it's only one component. Capacitors, inductors, op amps, and many other parts go into making the amplifier. But it's the electrical engineer taking advantage of all the parts where any product truly shines. And that doesn't appear in the parts list. So I could care less if a $1,000 product costs a dollar to make. If it's better than everything else available, then it's worth it. So is the Fosse V3 Mono worth it. I needed to listen. These were already well broken in because of my previous heat test, so I got on my bish and I got on her hard. I tested with the cleanest signal possible, balanced inputs directly from my Yamaha CDS2100 to a preamp, then back out to the Fosse, attached to Acoustic Energy AE320s. I wanted to use the AE320s because they dig down to 35 hertz and create a more demanding load. Plus, with a sensitivity of 88 dB, they aren't the toughest nor the hardest to drive either. This amp had more dynamics than its predecessor. Music seemed more open with clear spacing between loud drum beats, organ blasts, etc. Bass had good authority, but it just lacked a bit from what I hear from better amps. When you get into Bish's wall of sound period of the early 1960s, you get a touch of compression, 
A lack of complete transparency is the best way I can explain it. Don't get me wrong, the V3 monoblock is a significant improvement over the V3 stereo. And this is where Fosse is continuing to prove that they are soon going to play a larger role, in my opinion, in the high-end audio world. They're just one of those scrappy companies that continue to claw and edge their way to the top. While some measurements show a bit of drop off in frequency nearing 20,000, I didn't hear it, probably because the amount of music that plays in that range isn't just limited, but usually accompanied by so many other sounds to hear a half dB drop at 19 kilohertz during anything outside of test tones is going to be impossible. Not for Hemholtz, but for you and me. That doesn't mean you don't want an amp that's dead flat from 20 to 20. It's just that in this price range, it can be forgiven. This is a very good amp that is just missing greatness by a hair or two. I hooked up two V3 monoblocks to a pair of Acoustic Energy AE320s because these speakers never drop below 4.5 ohms and usually stay in the 8 range. I wanted to test with these speakers because they were already in my test rig. Plus, with multiple bass drivers, the ability, as I said earlier, to play down to 35 hertz, this will put a nice strain on the amplifier. I began once again with my CD player hooked up to a preamp because the monoblocks are true amplifiers. There is no volume control. I began playing pink noise and cranked it up. My mic was three and a half meters away and it wasn't getting very loud. I continued to crank the volume all the way, 67 dB. That was the reading at full volume. <sighs> I was using the balanced inputs, but the CD player was outputting v from the preamp. Could the preamp have been the problem? Could the preamp not be giving enough gain or as much gain as it was receiving back out to the amp? I decided to go insane and I plugged the CD player directly into the V3 monoblocks. We were going to go full volume on startup. So why not start with Bish's 90 second masterpiece, Speak to Me. It starts off so quietly you can barely hear it. This way I'll know if I'm in trouble before trouble comes a knocking. I knew soon enough that there was not going to be any trouble. I wasn't getting any extreme loud sounds. Surprisingly, the song never got too loud at all. So back to the pink noise test track with no volume control. That's right, no preamp and 67 dB. Once again, either these chip amps are getting consumed by full spectrum sound or the lack of additional gain to dish out the power when they aren't provided the exact voltage signal they want. I'm not exactly sure. You can speculate on why, but whatever the reason is, I continue to hear a lack of dynamics when there is a wall of sound music going full out. Just for testing purposes, I did hook up my 100 watt per channel Yamaha AS2100, which must be adding significant gain to the balance signal because while on paper, it should be even less powerful than the Flossy V3 monos, it saw 67 dB way in the rear window, maxing out at 93 dB. For those of you interested, that pink noise track is recorded at negative 20 dB and is being sent via a CD player outputting a two volt signal to the amp. I know they want more, but they're not getting it. Unlike my previous Fosse amp review, this was at three and a half meters distance and therefore, this is very important, while the speakers were both 88 dB in both tests, they were different speakers. So it's hard to do a true comparison. However, similarities are very close. I would argue that even with the 10 dB drop off, since I increased the distance by 350%, the mono edition has more power than the V3 stereo. According to Fosse's own specs, they state the same thing with the stereo version putting out 115 watts the mono version 120 watts, both into 8 ohms at 1% THD. That's a lot of THD. And both with a 5 amp 48 volt power supply. There's an old saying, it is what it is. The Fosse 3 monoblock is a low cost chip amp, 
And as such, I can say that Fosse is back as the king of cheap chip amps. Yes, this beats the IEMA AO7 Max. But being the king of cheap chip amps is still a far cry from being king of the amps. So what do we give our little upstart king from the small but growing country of Fosse? You start with a 2023 Peso Lemborero Plias Alberino, paired with an oven roasted Cornish hen with roasted leeks and a fresh garden salad. No King Fosse, you're not quite ready for the Caesar salad, but I suspect you'll get there in a year or two. I brought out my Yamaha AS2100 once again, plugged it into the CD player, and like I said earlier, 67 dB was even less than half on the volume control. At nearly full volume, pink noise, it went to 93 dB. Once again, a 100 watt rated integrated amplifier that can receive a two volt signal, expects it, adds gain, whatever they do, because it does not output 1% THD. It's a hell of an amp. It can literally obliterate a cheap chip amp that simply needs more gain to achieve its full power output. However, you feed this amplifier the 4.5 volt audio signal it wants, and it will get loud enough to blow you and your speakers out of most rooms. Do what I do, plug it into a CD player that feeds it a two volt signal in a large room, and you may not even need a preamp because assuming the volume control can just be the stop start on your remote. Additionally, the lack of dynamics during music, during wall of sound music, and I sadly can't recommend any cheap chip amp yet for your full hi-fi version. However, for a mid-fi or low-fi version of your hi-fi, yes, I think the Fosse is a fantastic choice. And I fully expect Fosse to come back with upgrade unit in the years to come and really blow me away. Just a quick FYI, members get dedicated videos which will never be available to the general public. Never! So subscribe if you want to be informed when our next video drops, but become a member if you want videos that will include everything from audio discussions with Hemholtz, behind the scenes videos, crazy stuff I do when sober, and other stuff. Thanks for watching this video.